Hey guys, Joe Pazinski here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. I have a job set up in the manual mill behind me that is a secondary operation to the production job coming off the CNC. And for reasons unknown at this moment, I can't do it over there, so I'm going to do it over here. It is a tapping job where I have to run 400 832 holes through some 7075 aluminum. The technique or the setup I'm going to show you this morning is a twist on a technique that I call my sliding drawer technique or the slide technique. And just because of the part geometry that I'm working with this time, I couldn't do it exactly the same way as I did it last time. So I got a little more creative and I thought I'd share the setup with you. So let's take a walk over to the mill and check it out. The tapping head that I'm going to be using for today's demonstration is the Tapmatic RX50. It is the big brother to the RX30. And I can tell you, I absolutely love this. These are very expensive, but you get what you pay for. And if you buy quality, it is going to treat you well. And this thing has just delivered the goods on thousands of holes. You can see the capacity on the front, M3 to M12, and number six all the way to a half inch. That is quite a range. And I'm fairly sure that the RX30 starts at like an 080 and goes up to about a quarter of an inch. So it's a little smaller. And the torque is adjustable by the top here. If you want to see a little bit more about the uh, adjustability of this particular tapping head, I have a video called Are All Taps the Same Part 2. Go to about the 15 minute mark on that and it'll show you how the taps are loaded and such. But that's already been shot so I'm not going to shoot it again. Alright, let's load some parts in here and get to it. This is the setup for today's job. And although these parts look like they are being held securely in this vise, they in fact are not. They're floating. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I'm a big fan of tapping freehand. Now the only thing you need to do to tap freehand is to secure your piece from lifting and rotating. And you can basically just align this under that tap and you don't even have to hold it, but I usually do. Take a look at the setup from the side. see that the aluminum inserts that I have made uh, will accommodate parts with different thickness carriers on the bottom this little piece right here and what you want to do is position the part in there so that it's up against the underside of your undercut establish the height with a parallel or a spacer block or whatever and for this particular job this gap here is very consistent so I sized the aluminum to use a conventional size parallel and on the working side I have a thinner parallel so that as the tap comes through it does not interfere with uh, anything underneath because boy that's a rude awakening and when that happens you only get one shot at saying oops and then the tap explodes so there's a tool bit in the center there's a bunch of feeler gauges to establish the wiggle side to side it is minimal and the beauty of these tapping heads is you can be just a hair off center as you're coming down with the tap and the tap will float a little bit and the part will float a little bit and everything will find its own center and away you go. So I have 400 holes to do like I said. Let's uh, turn this machine on see what it can do. The depth of this particular operation is established by the quill stop. And you can see that the tap comes down almost to the end of the thread. Actually, definitely to the end of the thread. It'll pull about another hundred thou beyond that on its own. It's a self-reversing head, so I do not have to turn the machine on and off. And I'm going to run this right around 900 RPM. You could probably go up to around 1400 or so. But I know 900 is going to cut just fine in this 7075 material. I'm going to use tap magic for aluminum. And let's rock and roll, see what happens.
Okay guys, now I have a bunch more of these holes to do, but I figured I would just show you the concept, because that sliding rail concept works very well. Please do not hold these by hand when you're running a tapping head down into a part. If the tap grabs, you're going to have a helicopter and a meat slicer, and I guarantee you're not going to get your fingers out of the way in time. So if you can keep your part from spinning and you can keep your part from lifting, it can float in the setup and the setup will work just fine. Alright guys, that sliding drawer technique works exceptionally well. I think if you try it that you're going to like it. Uh, if you do, make sure that the gaps in your setup are minimal. Don't let the part lift, don't let the part twist, and definitely don't try to do that freehand. If it spins, it could be ugly. Anyway, be safe, be careful. I hope you like what you saw and I hope you can use it. Go Pie Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.